picture of God, of Jesus actually telling us we are a good partner to him. And yet I was under this false gospel of walking around claiming to be the bride of Christ. And yet we say, we speak so much death over ourselves and say, oh, we're the bride of Christ, but we have, you know, a proclivity and orientation towards sin. It's inevitable. Um, but then in John, when there is the, um, there is the blind man at the bath, and then there's also the adulterous woman, and Jesus says to them, go forth, sin no more, lest something worse befall you. And I went, well, if sin is inevitable, then Jesus just cursed them. And we know that he's not cursing them because he's blessing them, he's healing them. And so then it really just was a strange moment um, that happened uh, about like halfway through last year where I went, oh, we're really not supposed to sin. Going forth and sinning no more is serious. And it's not just a lofty goal. Um, and so we're not supposed to be living this life of compromise. And Jesus didn't pay the ultimate price for us to be the same. He didn't pay the price for us so we could um, manage or set aside sin, but to actually be done with it. Um, and it's also written here, I found in Genesis 6, 3, it says the, the spirit doesn't strive with man. And um, the spirit wants to be in a pure, holy vessel. Um, and in first, so anyway, that's just a false gospel that just got shattered for me. And I went, okay, wow, to actually, we actually have to be one with him. We actually have to be worthy to be his wife. And the wonderful thing is we don't have to work there. It's actually already been done for us. And first John 4, 17 has basically been my verse for the last eight months <laughs> and saying, okay, sharing characteristics with Jesus is not enough. Having some qualities of his isn't enough. We actually have to be exactly like him. We have to be exactly spotless, blameless, above approach. And the wonderful thing is we don't have to work our way there. We can just start from within glory. And so how do we do that? We get born again. There were so many verses here um, that I have about that. So John 1, 13, being born from above, being born of God. Um, of course, Acts 2, 38, turning to God and then um, that we might take hold of the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so a lot of these just references say the same thing, which is we really do actually have to die. Um, but a lot of people are willing to die. I wasn't willing to die for a long time. I was living life on the cross and wondering why is there still so much sin in me? And the answer is because I didn't submit my, my soul into God's um, hands. I didn't actually die. I had this um, image that came to me of um, the amount of trust that it takes to actually just die with knowing that it is promised to us that we'd rise again. Uh, and I saw this image that I'll share, which was of um, someone who intentionally drowns themselves with the expectation that someone will do CPR on them. And I go, cause that's how much you believe that God will raise you from the dead. I will die. I will intentionally drown myself. Um, so anyway, it just became very clear to me that we really are to be born again. We really are to die to all sin once and for all. Um, not so that we can just be saved, um, but so we can actually be one with God so that we can be married to him. Um, and just this beautiful image of Jesus proposing to all of humanity, having fully committed to us, asking that we would fully com um, commit to him. Um, so then I just want to end on Matthew 5, 48, which says, be perfect as your heavenly father in heaven is perfect, uh, which isn't a suggestion or a lofty goal. It's just a commandment. And those in Christ are commanded to be holy. Um, so it's not the great suggestion. It's actually... <laughs> um, it's actually the great like commandment. It's a, like a very high commandment. So anyway, that is three minutes. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but I would love for anyone who has feedback to um, to share first, and then we can give some feedback right at the end. Oh my gosh, that's so good. <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, is there anything that um, stood out to you guys? Um, anything you guys want to encourage um, Ariel with? Um, please share. I can go first too. <laughs> um, so I love what you shared. So like I have a couple of notes that I took too. 
Um, I really love what you shared about being equally yoked to God, because like you sh were sharing about how the Bible encourages believers to be equally yoked to someone who is equally a believer. Um, why wouldn't he use that same standard for his people with himself? And so when we actually examine it, like how you did, um, that we are supposed to be worthy. It's not just someone who will continue just to like be worthy after death um, in terms of physical death. But I like how you tied it in with like, okay, are we willing to die, right? And like you, you use that um, understanding of how so many people like hang on the cross, right? They stay there and then they try to kind of figure out like, okay, well, I'm going to be stuck in struggle versus actually being dead to sin. And I know like, I know, you know, so many Bible verses about that too, like the importance of dying um, on the cross once and for all, you know, um, and, <laughs> and I like um, how you ended things too, which is Matthew 5, 48, that it's actually an encouragement. It's a commandment that is not burdensome. It's a commandment that is from God, um, that is attainable, that's easily accessible, that all of us are able to fulfill because of what Jesus did. And so I really appreciate that it was not workspace at all. Hallelujah. <laughs> and it was really all about um, love and like what Jesus actually did on the cross for us so that we can actually be one now. So thank you so much for sharing, Ariel. I really appreciate it. It's beautiful. Um, would anyone else like to share? Even in person too, we have people here. So you guys can switch seats with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You want to share, honey? Okay, come. Hallelujah. I don't know. Can you see me? Yeah, I think you can. You can see me, right? Yeah, I can see myself in the camera. Yeah, that was good. That was really amazing. You followed the flow. I don't know if you saw what you did, but the way that you opened it up, what happened was it led to a, a place uh, where people couldn't just uh, understand what you were saying, but could also uh, relate and encounter what you were releasing. Mm -hmm. So you, oh, well, the way that you opened it up also uh, provoked the mind to think. Like I was underneath a false gospel for so long. So a lot of people are really drawn into it. But the way that you opened it up was following what God had wanted you to open it up with. Because what it does is it shows people that they can be bold in what they're saying. They don't have to back down. They don't have to bend their knee. They don't have to uh, try and appease people. So the flow of it immediately was strong. It was like a, a spear piercing through. Mm -hmm. But even when you began to speak of like, uh, let, just let me explain all of that. It, it sharpens the edges of it. So the flow was very, uh, uh, I don't know, meticulous. It was very uh, accurate in what you were trying to accomplish. So even in those three minutes, it's something that you would be able to replicate and reproduce, even going out into the streets, even producing and showing to family, showing to friends. So it was very good in just teaching. You taught the whole gospel and you <laughs> broke down mindsets uh, within three minutes. So very good job. Yeah. Very powerful, very strong message and very uh, accurate in what you're doing. It shows that you've been uh, not just... Uh, reading the words but you've actually been living it because you're able to take because i saw certain parts like i would say like midway through where you changed what you were going to say and you went with boom this is what i'm going to say now so it's very uh, accurate in what you were saying so good job really good job got to come back Jose, great job, Ariel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sandra said that she admires uh, Ariel's desire and heart for God. Honey, you gotta come and share, because I don't know if you can hear from that. Yeah, we have people on uh, Facebook oh, yeah. who are also commenting, and our sister Sandra said uh, that she admires your desire and heart for God. And Thank our you, uh, sister and good friend, uh, Kathy Young, 
says that yes, she agrees. And that does amazing. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, and yeah, kind of like to share onto what Ron is sharing too. Like one of the reasons why we wanted to keep it about like three minutes for teaching was like, okay, how can we also share with people who just like, if you just have a quick second with um, someone like standing in, standing in Walmart, right? Or like um, a family member that you haven't seen in so long, like how can you push uh, that conversation towards like what God has been saying to you about them uh, for a while too. And so like this isn't to rush, this isn't to, um, uh, to make it short, but like to be really purposeful with our time and like how we honor the Lord in that way too. Yeah, so um, yeah, we can go to the next person. Uh, and thank you so much, Ariel, really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, um, so we can get to the next person. Um, honey, did you hear someone? Give them a chance. Okay, give them a chance. Okay, Ron's saying give them a chance. So if anyone would like or feel led to share next, like definitely let us know in the chat, do the raise your hand thing. Um, if, the, if your heart's burning to share, it's probably you. <laughs> so who would like to go next you know who you are <laughs> thank you sister Amelia <laughs> Ronald said thank you sister Amelia <laughs> are you ready Amelia Nope. <laughs> but why not? Because I have to go anyways, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds you good. Uh, yes, I'll spotlight you. Um, let I us know the uh, what, how would you like to be cued? Um, right there. And we're oh, yeah, right there. I can, I can try to time myself over here. Um, With would that be more helpful or would you like us to help? Whatever, whatever is more useful for you. Uh, no, I can do the same thing what Ariel did. Ariel did okay. Put a time on my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right. Let me do the introduction and then let you go. Uh, so Amelia is someone who is amazing because I've never met you in person yet, but we've had all these like conversations that are so encouraging. Um, you always go the extra step even beyond like, uh, even when we're like trying to figure things out, like technological wise, um, you've always been the person to like, not just only provide like, so like so many helpful suggestions, but like you'll make that time to um, love us, honor us and share. And I see that you doing that with like everyone else too, like in your family. And I know like um, you have so much things in your plate and you're incredibly smart, incredibly wise and creative. So I just really want to bless you in um, what God has been sharing with you, especially these last couple of uh, weeks. Um, these last, I would say like even what God is telling me now is like even these last past couple of years, like especially in 2020, spearheading into 2021, there's things that God has shown you with much clarity, with much um, revelation in what God wants, what his desires in his heart, what he, um, how he really wants to impart the gospel to us. So I just really want to thank you so much for joining us like all these Sundays and like just like really loving the body of Christ and loving God so well. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for that. So feel free to share. That's, that's, um, that's the greatest introduction. Um, so I'm actually, um, I enjoy uh, your class, you and Ronald's class. So thank you guys for, um, you know, doing this whole thing. Um, but this is new to me um, in regards to sharing uh, the word of God. So uh, I've learned a lot from from the whole class. So I'm just going to be sharing a little between unity and salvation. So 
Isaiah 12, 2 says, Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. So what is God saying? I, I know Ronald spoke about, you know, the meaning of salvation. And the meaning of salvation is to be healed and be made whole. And God himself is the cause of my salvation. So this is the good news. Something that is lacking inside of my life, only God can fill that. So can we be in lack when, you know, we have Jehovah Jireh on our side? No, <laughs> we can never be in lack. And when we receive the Lord Jesus, we do not have to dwell in the past anymore to understand our incompleteness because Jesus is the cause of it all. And um, another um, thing is, I know that I become blameless before God, no matter what happens, because he does not look at my insecurities, you know, our insecurities, and he does not see my scar. I have the fullness of Christ within me. As Colossians 1.10 says, you are in him, made full and having come to the fullness of life. In him, you have made, been made complete. The law could not perfect us, only God can. The love of God can make us whole, healed, and complete so that we would become as Jesus's perfect love. So we are free from offense, bitterness, hurt, and unforgiveness. So we don't need to feel envious of others or, you know, jealous of others. And I know he also taught us about the fullness of Christ. And that means that we have no lack and we are made complete in him. Uh, so then I just had, I just had like a few scriptures that I have been like, it's been like, you know, working in me and. I know with the whole marriage and unity of Christ, it was like a whole different perspective, especially when, you know, when you're taking communion and you realize that that cup and that bread, you're saying yes to Jesus and no to the world and you are alone. So like, as Galatians 2.20 says, we have been crucified with Christ and we no longer live, but Christ lives in us. So the life I, we now live in the body, we live by faith in the son of God who loved us and give himself for us. So, so, you know, uh, those are the few things that I have. And I do want to leave with this. Um, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. So the greatest work that we can do is believe, trust, and love. Believe that Jesus died for my sins, that he was crucified, and the, that he was resurrected for me so that I can freely live, from, freely live freely from sin. Trust in the Lord. And today is Valentine's Day, so we have to love one another because Jesus is love. Amen. Wow. <laughs> I want you guys to all come here and be part of our church. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Um, does anyone want to share <laughs> before I do? Oh, that's good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was a lot. Um, but I think I've never spoken, um, and timely like timed before besides for school when you have like a speech class or you know they tell you you need to make a two minutes or five minutes speech so this was good <laughs> thank you i love uh when you said be uh saying yes to him and no to everybody else and just like thinking of marriage we go yes like forsake all others um, no other lovers, only this one love. So I love that. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Really, really good. Monica, did you want to share? Sure. Well, in response to Amelia or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so actually,
a lot of the things that you were speaking were the things that he put on my heart. And so I just appreciated that. Um, you know, even, even talking about unity, um, I think it's just, you know, the reminder that as we are one with him, like we're unified with each other. And um, I just love the part about how, when we have a new heart, that none of our hurts from the past are there anymore. And just how you um, went through the definition of what it means to have a new heart. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, it's interesting because in the beginning when you were sharing Amelia and as you went on like what I kept on hearing was like the way that your heart is and the way that your voice is it comes off as like so gentle and God was telling me about how like what a prize it is is it to be gentle when you're speaking the truth because as you were as you were speaking, I just saw Jesus speaking to people in such a way that is so straightforward, but so gentle, like, like I'm salvation, like, don't you want me? You know, like I'm salvation, don't you want the fullness in all that I am? Like, and I kept on seeing that image of Christ like over and over again as you were speaking. So that was really special for me. Um, and I see that even like in your um, workplace or like as you're studying or in your family to like your um, countenance, like your face, your mannerisms and like um, there's just so much Jesus. So that's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Also on Facebook, thank you, you guys. Um, let's see. Is it with... stuck right there. So Kathy Young says, wow, powerfully shared. This is awesome. <laughs> Shanti said, good going, proud of you. Yay. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Also, one last comment, um, Geraldine, good to remember what she or Amelia said, I have the fullness of Christ, what more can I lack? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much, Amelia, for sharing. Um, and I know someone's supposed to go next. Yeah, okay. Same person. Um, I'm not sure if I can see Facebook. Okay. Who's, who would like to go next? Hmm. <laughs> Monica, yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um. Yeah, so sorry, I wanted to be here in the very beginning, but I just felt like I needed to take that time. Um, so I'm excited to go back to everybody's testimonies. I'm super excited. Um, so during that time, <laughs> God was just preparing in me just the peace. And I think that's um, really what he's been revealing to me um, through the study and also just um, the wholeness that um, I have all of him right now. And I, I wanted to speak about um, constant union with him that I think for a very long time, um, I thought that I had to disconnect with his presence or like disconnect with um, the reality of um, my time with him alone um, or, um, maybe like when I'm at church and I am just in freedom to worship him, that um, I had this idea or this experience or this battle that when I um, am not in that place, that I need to um, adjust myself or that I need to struggle. But I think what I've appreciated, um, one of the 
most uh, one of the things that I appreciated most about um, what Catherine and Ron have shared is that there is no struggle anymore because um, I don't need to be disconnected with him at any time. That if I truly um, believe in him, um, that my hope is in him, um, then there is no striving that um, that everything is in partnership with him, that I am covered by him because he is, he makes me perfect, that um, I'm not carrying the weight. And um, I think uh, he was just encouraging me to see um, this whole study just on the foundations of the gospel, just the wholeness and the hundred percent of everything that we have now. Um, that it's not about the process, but it's Jesus's salvation, that he is my joy. Um, and he's always celebrating because I was his prize, that, that we are each his prize. Um, that all I need to do is to, it's like he was making that decision with me. It's his invitation to, uh, for me to make a decision with him. It's no longer me just making a decision on my own. And um, I just, I, I just appreciated coming to realize that through all of the, you know, the wrestling and um, wondering if I am really made whole, am I really, um, has my heart and my life been completely separated from my old habits, from my, um, my former self and um, all throughout the day today, he was just securing that. And um, I just, I think that is the, just the best thing to realize. And I don't even know how much time I have left, but um, if I can just share one more thing to kind of um, wrap that up in the context of marriage with him. Um, uh, I just remember in one teaching, um, Catherine said that marriage with him is the will of God um, and separateness and wholeness in him is the will of God that I have been in union with him since the beginning of time, since before the world was created. So I have that, that is his will. Like I don't have to feel obligated to push him aside in order to even minister to someone, you know, um, that he, he makes me his priority. Um, and in me making him my priority, it's also ministering to others as well. So I just love um, the fact that that is the truth. And um, that's what I wanted to share. That's what he wanted to share, I guess, <laughs> through me. So thank you. That was good. <laughs> That was so good, Monica. Oh my gosh. Um, I think it's amazing because um, I love, I love like all of our introductions together and like the, the, um, the value that you have in, in like being part of like our community, being part of like um, our family is so special because like I've been seeing like this journey of like the, all like the light bulbs like going off, you know, like for the years that we've been together. And it's incredible because um, like your, your heart is changed. Like, you know, like you're, you're not just saying this, but you're imparting this into anyone. And as you were sharing, like what I kept on hearing the Lord say is like, aren't, aren't her words so precious? Like, isn't Monica so precious? <laughs> and that's like how you share like Jesus too. It's like, isn't his fullness, isn't our marriage with God like of so much value? Like, don't you want to join us? Like, don't you want to join him? And I love what you're sharing too is like, it is his will. Like there's an ease in being partner with him. It's There's an ease of like being loved by him. There's an ease of um, being like living life with him, you know, because he is our life. And I love what you said about like, it is his will to like be married to him, 
you know, like you don't have to like push him aside or even the opposite. You don't have to struggle to like get into like his presence or to be with him. And I think you shared about like how um, no longer do we have to be separate as well. Like no longer do we have to do things by ourselves and like kind of work and do all these things. Um, and it's, it's really amazing. So, um, and for everyone else that uh, doesn't know Monica, like um, you, your journey with God is so incredible. And like, like I always hear like, oh, I trust her like from Jesus whenever we talk like, oh, I'm so in love with her. Um, and we met, we met such a long time ago, but we weren't that close when we went to church together. Um, and like, I really think, I think Joyce too, like, um, that we got to like hang out and I got to like know you like one in one, know you as like such an amazing daughter um, of God, a woman of faith. So thank you so much, Monica, for sharing. Um, I know there's people on Facebook that we're sharing too. Uh, Monica, we can feel your love for Jesus. You all are awesome. <laughs> That's what Kathy Young said. Um, Shanti said, awesome, Monica. Uh, so thank you so much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, does anyone else want to share and give feedback for Monica, encourage her? I just was hearing um, just as you were speaking and there's also other times, even just when we were in class, uh, when for whatever reason, like you would just catch my eye and I just kept hearing Jesus saying like, this is my sweet one. Like, this is my, this is someone who's very special to me. Um, and as you were speaking, I just heard like, just, there's so much gentleness and love in what you're saying. So yeah, that's just the, all I'm hearing. It's just how much God really thinks you're very special to him and how much you're precious to him. That's the word that keeps coming up is Yeah, Monica, I just wanted to say you did such a great job. Um, I'm really proud of you. I know we've, we spoke about, we've talked about this as well. Um, but yeah, you did such an amazing job. And I love how you're applying the word um, to your life, you know, and I think like Catherine, I've also seen you grow like over the last year. Um, and just that hunger for God has been, you know, watching you grow and listening to you like, I want more of that. So thank you so much you're amazing thank you so much everybody <laughs> thank you monica for your servant heart and your love for jesus i don't know if you guys can hear me but um but i appreciate that um we need more of his children to to um share with a lost world so thank you and continue to um, point others to jesus god bless i don't know if people can hear me i'm i'm doing this on my phone so but if um everyone has shared i'll share can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Tim. Thanks so much for sharing. And we're so excited to hear what you have to share, too. Yes. So God speaks to me in three. So I have three scriptures for you folks. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40, which is love God and love people. Um, John 14, verses 12 through 14, that's about um, the greater works than these he will do through us. So that's oneness with the Father. And the third one is Matthew 28, 18 to 20, the Great Commission. So um, I just feel so grateful for um, the teachings just how um, how um, Ron and Catherine shares God's living word and his word is living, he's alive. And so um, 
that if, just being a former teacher, I think about it, just keeping it simple. So like KISS, keep it simple, servant. Um, and um, that the way we, um, you know, what, what Ron and Catherine share is God's word and, and it just flows. And it's, um, that's what we are to not just on Sundays, but daily spend our time with Jesus. And, and so happy Valentine's Day, Jesus, and, and happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Um, we, his love um, is, you know, Jesus set the standard for his love for us. So just walk, you know, I've just seen if you're, we are faithful and obedient to him. He will bless us in ways that we can't even imagine. Amen. Thank you so much, Tim, for sharing. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, as you were sharing, um, God was highlighting with like the weight of your words. Um, there's so much like richness. There's so much depth. There's so much understanding um, in how you share about Jesus. Um, even when we had our phone call like a couple of days ago, uh, Ron and I were so excited <laughs> about like you just sharing and just dropping knowledge and like, you know, um, how simple is the gospel, but how rich and deep and beautiful um, is the love of God. Um, in, in the entirety of who he is. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's always such a joy to hear from you. And for those who don't know Tim, um, I actually, a lot of people actually on the island know Tim. Um, a lot of our friends do, but I never <laughs> met Tim um, until we were at H&M. And Tim, um, I love it when you share the story too about the threes um, and how we met because Tim, we met like literally like in HM on the street. I didn't know him. Um, and God led me to pray for him and just to love him. And like the love that you have for God, Tim, is incredible. Uh, it's amazing. It's eternal. It's everlasting. Um, and uh, it's so fun. Like, it's really fun. God kept on saying like your relationship with the Lord is not serious but there's so much like lighthearted um, joy as well with him. So thank you so much for sharing about um, the goodness of God. Yeah. And like the, the oneness we can have, the love we can have with him. So it's beautiful. Yeah. I was so thankful for that encounter with you, just you um, walking, stepping out in faith and just praying for someone. And just the gospel, the gospel. The church is not confined. It's not confined to the four walls of a building. We are the church, so um, discipleship is important. Um, it's, and I just see discipleship is easy as see one, be one, and teach one. So that's when you, that's, that's a blessing to have people who so into our lives and to show the way. And the, uh, you know, God's not into addition, but exponential math. So that's why discipleship is so important. And, you know, and for me, like the three Ps are prayer, number one, and number two, praise and worship our Lord, and three, proclaim and preach his word and point others to Jesus. So if we love God and love people, and we are to um yeah, to be in sync with his will and to um to 
and for us to be um, conduits of being um, more heaven on earth. You know, um, we have a relationship with Jesus now and, and we can, we'll have eternal life with him, but what we do on earth determines how many more um, souls can be saved for him. Man. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you. Um, would anyone like else to share? I would encourage Tim as well. I just hear a song. I mean, the pandemic is like um, a cry out to us believers as. Um, you know, many souls are being lost. We got to share others before they go. So, you know, if so when someone dies, I always wonder if they knew Jesus. Because that's our true home. But we have, um, if we can just um, be in, intimate relationship with him to lead and guide us and and put people in our path who will uh, help develop us so that's why this kind of class is so good and, and so transforming because it's like um the sad part is like i don't know if um our churches would all let someone like Ron and Catherine speak at their church because of whatever issues they have. But <laughs> as, you know, God is, you know, Galatians 2.20 talks about God, that we die to ourselves and live for him. And, you know, um, I like to think that all churches are like that, but after visiting church, churches, it's like um, God wants us to be unified as a church. You know, we are not to compete with each other, but be complete each other. And we got to work together. It's like, um, you know, the gifts that each church has been given by God and we gotta not be selfish and work together. And you know, all this stuff in, that's going on in the world is spiritual. And you know, God's ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. As stated in Isaiah 55, eight and nine and uh, verse eight and nine. And we gotta always fix our eyes on Jesus because we can, if we don't, we can get caught up in the world and start reflecting more of the world than, than um, because we are his bride and we got to be unified and just um, have a, a marriage with our Lord and that's a covenant. And then, um, are we, we are we doing our end of the part? You know, it's like God is always faithful to us no matter what we do and um, he loves us and we are to love and we point others to Jesus. Because if we don't, then, uh, you know, we're gonna stand before the Lord someday and we um, he's gonna ask us and what we wanna hear is, well done, Good and faithful servant. So, and that's not just by just going to church on Sunday and sitting quietly. Um, as I um, just came from, my wife and I were teaching a class, and it's called Counterculture, class by a book by David Platt, 
And he talks about um, we got to not let the world influence us, but let um, Jesus influence the world. And so if you stand in and contend for your faith, then that should change the atmosphere wherever you are. So wherever we are, um, we are to reflect Jesus and, you know, that will speak to people and will want to know more about why we are like that. And we could just say and point to Jesus. And, you know, um, we're not supposed to take away the glory, our glory that should be given to God. And, you know, we have to do a self-check and, and that's um, why Ron and Catherine are so good because they are um, engrafted in the vine. <laughs> He's the one Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Tim, this is, uh, I know you don't know me, but um, my name is Jody. And as you were speaking, I just, I'm just so encouraged by your heart, like as you were speaking. And I just, I just saw the kindness of God all over you and the purity of your heart. And then I just heard a song just come up in my spirit. And I just felt like this song was coming from your heart as you were tearing up and speaking about the Lord. I, I heard the song, I love you, Lord. And I just started hearing it being sung over and over, over you. Just, I love you, Lord, and I live my voice. Let it be a sweet, sweet song. And I just see that being sung around you. And I just see the purity of your heart just ministering to the Lord as you sing and as you love on him and praise him. And I just wanted to bless you with that, that the Lord just loves the purity of your heart. So thank you, Tim, for sharing that. That blessed me a lot. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, you know, I look at Jesus, it was pretty uh, radical. We love you, Tim. <laughs> His love for others. So it's like, if you ever want, like, um, feel like to be encouraged to, um, to fight the good fight and, um, and just stand for Jesus, and he's, he's, um, he lives in us and is with us, and so, um, I mean, if we even thought like Jesus was alongside of us throughout the day, it's, um, he really is, because it's like he will reveal himself to us, and as you develop, as we develop a more intimate relationship with him, he um, he will reveal himself, and that's that's the thing. Where um, I mean, I when I met Catherine and Ron was in the store, and if I would have God sends his messengers. And then from out of our faith and obedience to him, um, he will speak to us more. And so um, that's what we want is just encounters with Jesus and so what Ron and Catherine was talking about, just being submitted to him and just, you know, his love is just, it's overflowing and it spills out to us. Too. And so, um, you know, the world is looking for love, but they look for love in the wrong places. So, um, we just got to show like how our lives were transformed by just knowing Jesus. 
Because, you know, I be, um, before I came to Christ, I was a warrior. You know, I would worry about silly, silly things. And, and now I still worry and, you know, but not, but I'm at peace with Jesus. So that's um, his peace. Um, we, we cannot comprehend. And so if we give the people come to Jesus and spend some time with us, like we just spent a fraction of our time with Catherine and Ron, Ronald, and but just getting that can just um, has, you know, even transform. I mean, I feel like I matured, but sometimes you gotta be um, discipled by by others who have who know um, who. Where do you need that um, that food, that spiritual food, you know? And um, that's why, as discipleship is so important, we gotta seek someone who has gone where you haven't, and then helps someone be help someone along when they're still on milk, you know? And it just, um, I mean. Um, I, I wonder, like, is it easier to um, train someone who has just started the relationship with the Lord so you don't have to undo all these teachings that you have come across and just get the, the pure food from the beginning, you know, and that's what's lacking. And you know, I thought of the year as 2020 as a time for Christians to rise up for him and, and speak out and contend for your faith and, and just for us to be called into what God has for us because we are created in his image. And Genesis 1 verse 26 states, and then, you know, God can use any one of us. And, you know, for all the people, like I thought of all the people who are in the classes, I don't even know you guys, but. Come on, Tim. Thank you. Oh. If you don't catch it, it speaks for itself. So we got to be hungry for more God and God will. <laughs> He knows our hearts, so he's gonna give you um it, it to where you're at. So I felt like you know throughout my life, God would just prepare me one step at a time, and uh, as long as I'm faithful and obedient, you know that's all that matters, and it's our own relationship with the Lord and that counts then because that should be our highest priority. Everything else is secondary. And if we love the Lord the way we supposed to love, then that flows out of us and enriches our relationships with each other more. But you know, if we love our spouse more than God, then you know, um, then we have to shift our way of thinking, you know, to love um, God first and and his love will flow through us. And so sometimes I'm, um, I look at the body of Christ and, and, you know, I wonder how many of them are Sunday Christians or daily Christians and, 
when we walk with the Lord, he, you know, 1 Samuel 16, 7 talks about man looks at appearance, but God looks at our hearts. And so we might fool the people on Sunday, but, but we are sure not fooling God because he knows all our thoughts and, you know, all our ways. And so, um, so if you keep that in mind, then it will walk the straight road with Jesus. And, you know, he says in his word is narrow is the road and, you know, wide is the path to destruction. And, you know, that's like, um, and that's in his, in his word. You know, so we can't, um, we can't, um, we got to speak the truth and the whole truth, the gospel is, is what people need and that we not to sugarcoat it and like how humans will tend to do. So I appreciate um, Ron and Catherine, um, their teachings um, don't sugarcoat us because, you know, in the last days there will be, um, you know, we already know how it ends, but we know it's going to get tougher. So the year 2020, 2020 you didn't, you didn't get strengthened in the Lord then. And you went through a year of potential growth and learning and to be ready for when he comes. And, and we have work to do while we wait. We don't just wait and don't do anything for him, but we are, he commands us, you know, and to do the Great Commission. So, um, but, you know, out of this one class, when our lives get transformed, we got to apply what is taught to us and what's taught to us to God in his word. Um, and, and as a teacher, I've but if you know you have knowledge but no application, I mean, I just think of the Pharisees, they were grounded, in, they knew his word, but they weren't grounded in having a relationship with him. So they their hearts were to please um, man and not God. And that's you know, um, and the thing about when we God gives our gives our gifts we have to be very careful that that we steward his gifts to us well or we could we could take a lot of pride or you know um just being a teacher i just know um, ron and catherine just flow through god's word and they, because they know his word but they also live his word. And that's the thing that speaks to me. Thank you. And, yeah. I, too, I just wanted to encourage you to, there's a couple people who are watching online and they said, um, Sandra said, your heart for God is amazing, Tim. And Kathy Young, you know, Kathy Young, Tim, nothing is stopping you from sharing your love for the Lord. Keep sharing, brother. Um, so I just really want to thank you so much. We honor you. We honor the way that you really love God in such a genuine way. And you're telling us, all of us, we must have that daily life with God. It's not about the Sunday. It's not about the moment. Um, but it's really living a life um, that was given to us by Jesus Christ. So um, I, I also want to thank you and introduce um, Gaina as well, um, because she is, we met at a wedding and we were bridesmaids um, three years ago, <laughs> almost three years ago. And um, she is one of the people that is so consistently hungry, rooted, and just determined to know uh, the truth. Uh, nothing but the truth because the truth sets us free um, and I miss her I haven't seen her in so long um, but really like you're so like I don't know <laughs> your love for 
God, your love for the truth um, is so sharp and so true. And so um, like, I don't know, it's amazing because like what Tim was saying, like what Tim, you were sharing too, is so many people want to hear those words that itch or uh, itch the ears, right? Um, but Gaina, <laughs> she knows the standard of Jesus. She knows the standard of what the Bible says. Um, and I'm so excited to hear what you're going to share with us um, because we know, um, well, I know, I know, I know, I know for sure that you love the Lord with spirit and truth. So thank you so much. Thanks. Look forward to hearing her share. Thank you so much. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm never sure. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, just thank you for the opportunity. Um, I haven't done something like this, so I'm going to tie myself and give it a go. So yes, um, I kind of structure around with a thought about who God is to me. And when I think of who God is to me, I think that he's creator. And one of my favorite books is Genesis. Um, and in a, you know Genesis 1, verse 1 tells us that um, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. And then further down on the sixth day, um, he created man. He he breathed life into man and made it in his image. And that's verse 27 in Genesis 1. And when I read that, that's so profound to me because when I see that God breathed, breathed life and created man into his image, that means that I'm a reflection of God. So when I look into the mirror, I can see Jesus. Like there's no, for me, for someone um, like growing up a little bit with self-image problem, um, I just have to look into the mirror and know that I'm a reflection of him. And because I'm a reflection of him, he loves me because one of the things of who God is, he's a loving God. Um, he's a God that is compassionate and caring and therefore he cares for my needs and that part of that character is within me it's just, I just need to step out and love it out because he's called me to be loving and caring unto others because that's part of his nature and that's when he breathes life, breathes life into us he's breathing those characters into us his nature of being merciful his nature of being forgiveness like he's forgiving me of my sins before in the beginning of time you know but then as you know as the bible tells us sin enters and we get caught up into sin so then he sends jesus who dwelled amongst us which tells us in john john 1 verse 14 like you know jesus he lived amongst us he loves us so he could really show us like this is how i want to live life you know this is how i want you to live life this is how i want you to receive my love this is how I want you to care for others because his nature his character is in us and now he just wants us to live it out by showing his son as an example of how to live that out us but also for us to get there we needed to be redeemed and therefore Christ died for us on the cross and that's how we receive salvation and through salvation like Ron taught us is to be whole so all that sin or that pain that we felt that God has saved us like Jesus just wants to take it a step further and make us whole within him. Like he really wants to save, heal and deliver us. And that's how when we go through that process, we enter into relationship. And so the main thing that I really wanted to focus on, the one thing that I've really received out of this whole thing is the union with God and being married. But I really wanted to understand it for myself. Um, and I'm just going to share, like the way I understood it was in Ephesians 5, um, Okay, so this my time is up. But I just really want to share this last word. Is Ephesians five, um, verse twenty to twenty three, and we all know it's where God gives instructions to the body of Christ how a husband should love himself, um, his wife, and how a wife should love his husband. But for me, this spoke volumes to me, where it says, "For well, we have to submit unto Christ. We have to surrender to Him first of all. Allow God to be the head over our lives." allowing him to love us because he's already loved us from the beginning of time and then he showed us through his Christ. And then also allow us, allowing him to cleanse us because he wants to present us as spotless, without wrinkle or any blemish before the Father. 
he because through the father through jesus we get to know the father and so god really wants to clean us and bless us and make us whole and that's how we step into union with god so i encourage you to read ephesians 5 verse 21 to 23 i wrote a whole notes by now out of time is that just really just instead of looking at that scripture as this is how my husband should be this is how jesus wants to be with you is to really make you clean, whole, and present you spotless without blemish before the Father. So you can receive everything that he's created for you to be and love it out through your life. Because we are called more than what we are loving in this time. And we are called to step out what God has called us to do. Because he has truly chosen us as, as his bride. And so that's all I've got to share. I hope that blesses you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so good. <laughs> you, um, I, I know that we talk about like all of us, we talk about the gospel all the time, but it's so exciting to hear from each one of you guys. Um, and as you were sharing, Gaina, uh, the Bible verse that reminds me of like, he, like God is looking for someone who has faith when he comes back, right? The second time. And the Lord is just telling me, like, this is a woman of faith. This is a woman of faith. I will find her <laughs> when I come back. Um, so I just really want to encourage you. Wow. Like what you shared, what you just shared with us was so much truth, so much love, so much joy. Um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Um, <laughs> and also what he kept in showing me was like, um, the bread that you eat is of Jesus. It's unleavened bread. It's not mixing teachings, man traditions, um, different philosophies or different the like theologies that are from people, but like you are hungry for just him. He is your daily bread. And you notice when like, um, like it's not him. <laughs> you notice when it's a little bit different, it tastes a little bit different. Uh, so I really appreciate that about you. Whenever we have conversations together, um, there's so much um, pureness, so much purity, so much light, uh, so much love. So um, thank you so much, Gaina. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Would anyone like to share? I know uh, Sister Asha said, love listening to all the young revivalists. <laughs> oh, we love you, Sister Asha. Oh, so good. Amelia, did you want to share a little bit? You said that was so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, even from the very beginning of um, when you started to talk about Genesis and when Jesus, you know, God just breathed onto us and how you, um, you, you, like you made it look, you, you said that, you know, his reflection is in us. So that was... Um, it's true because, you know, we have to show who Jesus is and we have to portray Jesus within our lives so that other people will know who Jesus is, right? I know the last teaching that um, you know, we had was the one the same um, in the same perspective where we have to show other people who don't know who Jesus is, how Jesus is, because they only see our lives. They don't go to church or anything like that. So um yeah i liked um it was really good uh profound <laughs> and um i it's always good to keep it simple and you know get the hard truths in so good job <laughs> i just want to say that was brilliant thank you so much covered so much just the overall picture of everything so that you know we understood the purpose of just how like God's plan and his story you know like Jesus came um because 
he wanted to empower us just to be like him and to keep, you know, um, just sharing and spreading his love. So thank you. We are pure and spotless. Yes, you are, you are. <laughs> Um, would anyone like to go next? Yeah. Um, people in person. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Liz. Yeah, do you want to go? Sure. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Let me spotlight you too. Hey, Kira. Okay, let me spotlight you real quick, Kira. Hey, Kira. Oh my goodness. I Hi. So oh my gosh. This woman of God is amazing. So she is of an, another amazing woman. Um, but I, I love like all the encouragements that you send me. Um, and I'm sure like, I, okay. I wish I went to New York to meet all you guys in person, but um, I can hear like every time we, sp we speak and like every time you share, there's so much um, genuine enjoyment of the Lord, so much genuine love that you have for him, for others. Um, even like, even though you're at work, you're tuning in <laughs> at Q and A's because you cannot get enough of God. And not like the, the longing for him is so obvious in you. Uh, so, so excited to hear what you're going to share with us. All the honey. From <laughs> well, well, with me, I, I'm so blessed to have you and Pastor Ronald teaching. I'm so blessed to be in this class in whole, you know, because um. <clears throat> I, I have a tendency in jumping to class and class and class, but with this one is a test, it's an exam, it's a certificate if you don't do your homework and I just love it. <laughs> but um, are you guys hearing me? Yes, we can hear you, we can hear you, perfect. Oh, okay, so um, I'm, I, I did like a hundred different pages on salvation, on marriage with Christ, but um, first I'm gonna talk about marriage in Christ. Kratin, you'll have to help me when my three minutes is up because I didn't set my alarm and I'm gonna talk too much. Um, but um, what, I was, what I got from that, which I know you guys spoke about the, 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 the body and the blood, saying yes to Jesus, coming in one with Jesus, with his body and blood, but the ring, the ring represents the new covenant, isn't it? The new covenant of the Lord Jesus, because it, it has the old covenant, which was in Abraham, and the new covenant, which is in Christ. When you said yes to the Lord Jesus, you receive the ring, the new covenant, you receive the blood, you receive the body. I got that from there. And I, I want to talk a little bit on salvation which I'm going to read from my notes. <laughs> um, it's about the saving cost of everything. We should take everything. We shouldn't, we see a lot of times we take things for free, but we, we didn't get this new covenant for free. You know, we got it and Jesus paid the price for it. Our price, he paid the price on the cross for us. And our job is to be disciple, to know the word of God to be learn more about him, to know what he came in this earth specifically for, you know, know the true meaning of it through his word. In this way, we can be all and all in one with Jesus. You know, he gave his life. All we have to do is in our time is be faithful, live in his word, live in his, the truth of his word, you know, as in Luke 14, 35 said, it is fit neither for the soil nor the manure pile. It is true, it is shown out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Our cause is also our character, changing our character. 
like you know like goma like pastor like goma she had a really really bad character her salvation is when her husband he came back for her when god said go and take your wife back you know and start a new life she changed her lifestyle so that's what we have to do we have to change our lifestyle and live as christ live the christ of life he's our husband just how she go my had her husband take her back we have to understand jesus just and coming back he coming back as our husband and we said yes to him so we have to be in one accord with him and in order to do that is only to his word the love of jesus can just change anyone life it could change a touch of it to change anyone life or say person who love jesus i also hear pastor rana pastor katrin said this want to love jesus you can never hurt never ever you truly love jesus you can never ever hurt someone because you would you you jesus never hurt anyone amen submit to only jesus honor everyone respect become child like also learn to love jesus christianity lose their salvation with unforgiveness in their heart with wrong thinking in their mindset this is what happened when we lose our salvation luke 12:42 said the lord answer who, who then is their faithful and wise master who is the master put in charge for his servant to give them their food allowing allowing at the proper time the master of that servant will come one a day when he does not respect him and at an hour he is not aware of he would cut him to pieces and assign him in places with the unbelievers that's why we have to walk with jesus we have to have a mindset like jesus we have to honor our husband he is our husband we said yes to him so when he come we would be ready and we can because in luke 24 46th we don't know the time or the place or the hour he's going to come so that's why we have to be ready we have to be ready matthew 1834 katrina am i done <laughs> keep up. it's okay uh, <laughs> yeah keep it down <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 24, 25 said, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailer to be tortured until he should pay back all his all he owned. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. You see, we can't just say it in our mouth. Having salvation is, I am saved and I am loved and I'm. No, you don't say it from your lips. You mean it from your heart. So when you say something from your heart, you must feel it. You must know that is what Jesus did. Amen. In order to forgive, we must accept the love of Jesus in our Lord. Oh, Who is in the? Okay, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm so <laughs> I was like, Amen. yes, preach <laughs> yes, it. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't stop. I can't stop. I go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, oh my we have to we have to be able to know that when Jesus come we have to be ready and we have to say it is well it is well he would say we must finish well you know oh, okay <laughs> i'll stop <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We're like, yes. Oh my gosh. Preach it. Preach the word. Oh my gosh. It was amazing. I'm oh. like, I'm like shaking. I'm like shaking. <laughs> you did amazing. <laughs> so I'm like shaking. <laughs> Oh my God! Fire the passion for the Lord. Oh my goodness. Oh, so good. Um, man, when you're speaking what the Lord was showing me was like the crown of life on your head and like how much authority you have in your voice, how much love, how much fire. It's like the consuming fire of the Lord is upon you, like lighting you up from the inside out. And like, it totally shows like, cause you're like, okay, I know like I'm supposed to like kind of stop, but like there's so much more Jesus, you know? Um, so we honor that we love you. Um, it's incredible. And what God was telling me too is like, it's like the helmet of salvation that you have as well. Like you, you are crowned with salvation. You're crowned with Jesus. Um, so it's, I don't know. I, 
we should just give you a session to speak to. Like we want to give you all a session to speak. Just, just go off as much as you want. Um, and this is just the beginning. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, I would love to have other people encourage you too, because I was so good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you, Kira. I was, I felt the fire of God and just mm -hmm. like the life, like just infusing into me and just bringing it me just like on an even just a more solid understanding and just sharpening of, of how important it is to be ready. And, um, you know, I think it's just comforting to, I keep relating being ready now with like just being intimate with him and being one with him. So it's like, um, I just love how every, how everything's coming together, but thank you for reminding us even just, um, forgiving our brothers and sisters from our hearts because that's how he forgave us. And so thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to agree with Monica. Like I literally felt like, like the fire, um, coming from your mouth and I'm pretty sure if you had more time, you would have shared so much more, um, you know your own personal revelation about what you've received. Um, and at the same time, I even saw a picture and it was a picture you were in sort of like a marquee tent. I don't know, call it marquee or tent. And um, you were teaching people like the word of God, you know, that fire that comes from heaven was roaring out of your mouth onto people. So yeah, I, I just encourage you to continue teaching the gospel. You definitely have something to Amen. share. And, Amen. And so, Thank you. Thank you. It's so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Uh, we had a comment from uh, Geraldine. She said, fire of the Lord in and through you. So, yeah, it's so good. That was an amazing. Uh, you could have just went a whole session right there. I'm proud of you. That was amazing. I can't wait till we hear your whole session because that just was the beginning part of your teaching. You just were, you were getting right into it. You were plowing right through. So I was like, oh, here we go. I was excited. But we'll, we'll hear you teach the whole thing. I know that was just the beginning. I could feel it. But yeah, uh, does anybody want to go next? We have Sister Asha. We have Laura. We have Jose, or we can have somebody who's in person come and speak. In person. I like in person. <laughs> yeah, we'll have uh, Angelina come. Yeah. And I'll give you guys an introduction. This is my cousin. She's an anointed uh, woman of God. God is going to use her to bring uh, restoration, reconciliation to, to the nations around the world. I believe God has called her, as, as I've seen it, and as I've told her so many times, as a true uh, and pure uh, prophet of God, where she can go out and she can discern uh, so well uh, all the things that are going on around. But the one thing that you're going to see is so evident is her heart and love for people around her and for God especially. Like that God, uh, she's a walking and living encounter with God everywhere she goes. So uh, she's going to come and she's going to talk to you, but it's going to be a blessing. So here she comes. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Do I look there? Okay. Okay. So I brought my Bible. I have a couple verses that I wanted to share. What the Lord was highlighting to me was Ephesians 3, the gospel of grace, um, and how sometimes we can take it for granted of what Jesus paid for on the cross. And he paid such a high price, price for us. And I wanted to read the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Okay, 19 verse 20. Or do you not know 
that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you were bought with a high price. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so glorify God in your body. And I just thank God and thank Jesus for how much they loved and sacrificed for us, you know? And how deep his love is. And knowing that we are not our own, you know, he always tells us to, um, to um, lay down our lives, you know? You can't like take up your cross and follow me, you know, cause you can't like they say that I love is um, a dead man is a dead man. He can't resurrect, you know? And so I have another verse that I love too. Um, it's Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinance that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two making peace. And I just love this because he's making one new man, you know, born of God, you know. And sin is forever demolished and doesn't rule your life anymore. And God has purpose for each and every one of us that he destined before the beginning of time. Oh, man. It's not how I planned it to go. <laughs> You're doing amazing. Oh, gosh, such a boom wreck. <laughs> <laughs> At least I'm not shaking. I usually shake all the time. <laughs> I think one more I'll share. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For you are saved by grace and through, through faith. And this is not from yourself. It is God's gift. Not from works so that no one can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Yeah, like the Pharisees, they just, like Tim was saying, they knew everything about the law, but wasn't um, have a a relationship with God. And that's like the most important thing, you know, like you're teaching about somebody that you don't know, you know? And it's like, you wonder like, you know, if, um, if they really knew Jesus, you know, and accepted him, that, you know, he would be, <laughs> your life would be much better because Jesus is so awesome. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Amen. Oh my God. Amen. Does anybody have uh, any feedback that they want to share? <laughs> I know we have people that have feedback. Uh, Sister Asha said, 
how much you love your Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. But let's let somebody share and tell you some feedback on what they thought about your message. <laughs> A little all over the place. <laughs> You crushed it. You crushed it, girl. Thank you so much for um, just even starting just with those um, bare verses. Just feel like he's saying to me that Jesus is your personality. That's who you are. And all you need to do um, to share your heart is to just share his, you yeah. know, to share his word. And so thank you thank for you. that. That was great. Wow. Mm. Wow. Hi, can I encourage you? <laughs> um, so, um, Oh, I really feel that to encourage you, but I really want to um, also encourage you to pray about this as well. So as you were sharing, um, obviously, like I felt like God hearing your cry, but the word I kept hearing is lament. Um, and I feel like God really wants you to pour out what's in your heart. Um, and when you pour out that that lament, um, and I even hear that lam that lament is in the song, it's almost like you're going to receive something so, so radical from God. Um, and the way I see it, it's like you're on your knees and you're, you're pouring out your lament. And it's like, almost like a, like something is sparkling from heaven and it's coming right. Like it's like hitting earth, but it's hitting in your room. Um, and I feel like as that hits your room, it's almost like, it's like it's, um, yeah, it's just like something given to you in that moment. Um, so that's sort of what I received from you, um, for you. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that means anything to you. Um, but yeah, God is really interested in your heart and what you have to pour out. Um, like really, really interested. Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I just love that first love. <laughs> what I've just seen is first love, first love, first love. And may that first love never die, but just that go into flames and big fires. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. That is so good. Do you want to go next? Not yet. You're going to have to go. Oh, perfect. It's going to be perfect. She Thank told me she guys. doesn't have anything. So it's going to be perfect. That's the ones that I do like a lot. <laughs> uh, who do we still have? We have Jose. Does Jose want to go? Does Laura want to go? I see you now, Laura. You want to go? Yeah, I can go. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to okay. repeat the spotlight. Yeah, she's an amazing uh, woman of God as well. She has such an amazing heart for God. Uh, me and Catherine love to read uh, when you send in your homework, when you send in your responses, when you send us uh, emails. It's very encouraging for us to see, and it just uh, sparks uh, just delight to see what God is doing uh, in and through your life. And, and I believe when I prophesied over you, when we sent in the prophetic word, I told you God is going to use you uh, mightily. God is doing something amazing in and through you. So I bless what you're about to share with us. And I know it's going to be amazing. So go right ahead. Um, so something that I really, that God's been really speaking to me about throughout these sessions and just like um, for the past few weeks is really becoming one with him and having in intimacy with him. Um, um, it's not only about having public um, touches with him and like, feeling him at church on Sundays and feeling him um, at the retreats. No, it's about seeking him in our rooms, uh, just you and him. And like, because 
when you see him in your room and just it's just you and him, he's going to reveal himself to you in ways that you've never thought before. And you're really going to get to know him for who he really is. And he's going to reveal himself even more and more to you um, in ways that he never did. And you're going to get to know him and really you know, have intimacy with him and feel his touch and listen to his voice more and more. You're going to learn to depend on him and like he's going to be the center of your life and he's going to and everything is going to be about him because that's what life should be about. Life should be all about him because everything that we say, everything that we think and everything that we do, it's to honor him and honor him only. So um, God's been really talking to me about becoming one with him and like really knowing him and getting to know his voice, his touch, because he really wants to use us. But before he uses us, we need to know him and we need to become one with him so we can really show who he really is. I feel like the generations today, the generation of today, they, they seek for love and fulfillment things that are not going to fill the hole, the emptiness, because who really feels the emptiness is just Jesus. It's God himself, because nothing else is going to be able to fill it. Like everything else that we try to fill the hole with, it's just, it's not going to last. It's just for like a little bit. It's not for like forever. And when we we fill the hole with like Jesus, who who's the only one who can fill the hole with, we really know and we really we we have the true love and i feel like we we're really called to show the love that we that god gives us to the world because they don't know that love they don't know that love they seek for love in relationships they seek for love in people but people are not constant and people sometimes they are going to let us down but god he's never going to let us down because he's the same he was the same yesterday he's the same today and he'll forever be the same so we really need to we really need to establish a relationship and have intimacy with him above everything else. We have to really become one with him and say yes to him and no for, to everything else and be ready to leave everything behind so we can follow him and do things and follow the plans that he has for us and not our plans for ourselves because his plans are bigger and they're better than everything that we can plan for ourselves. So I think that that's really uh, what God's been speaking to me about, uh, really becoming one with him and having him as the center, as like everything in our lives. Amazing. Hallelujah. That was amazing. I know it just touched a lot of people's hearts. My wife messaged me. She's in the back of feeding her daughter. And she said, wow, I'm getting, I'm getting wrecked right now just listening to you it's amazing to uh not just hear your heart for god but also to uh feel it it's a tangible thing that you release where everybody uh can receive and know that god isn't a far off that he's really really real and i feel like i told you that, that everywhere you go people will know that god is not just a concept he's not just a theory but he's a god who's here he's near and he wants uh to be uh with us always so i'm going to open it up for everybody else to give feedback but i want you to know that it was uh it was amazing thank you so much it blessed a, a bunch of people i would say all of us when uh you were speaking i just kept seeing like this this woman has tasted the sweetness of the lord <laughs> and just seeing how much you're going to share that with other people so that they might taste for themselves and know for themselves that he really is everything that he said he is that he is a man of his word and so just as you were talking uh i was just hearing that and jesus just kept saying like this is this this one is so special to me and so much there's so much preciousness upon her and um just how you're really the apple of his eye and you're so he is so in love with you like he's madly in love with you. <laughs> so that's just what I wanted to share. And people will see that and they'll go, oh, I want that. It will spark a, an envy of people where they go, what she has, I want, because this is someone who's madly in love with Jesus and who knows that he's madly in love with her. And they'll see your marriage with him and go, I want to be married like that, you know? Anyway, that's just. Yeah, I just agree everything that Ariel said. Um, that was really incredible. Um, the moment like you open your mouth, I was 
captivated like I just wanted to hear more what you had to say and what experience you had with Jesus and it stirred a hunger in me like I was like yes Lord I want like I want what she has um and I want literally I, I literally want what you have what he's imparted in you so thank you so much for releasing that it was such a blessing and really encouraging um so yeah thank you so much I just want to say you are so full of light and thank you for your smile. It just like, it just takes over everything. <laughs> so thank you. You're just like a, yeah, just a breath of his love. So I just appreciated that. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's so good. I'm going to have my mom come over here because she has feedback for you and something she wants to tell you, but she wasn't going to say it, but that's what happens when you're prophetic. <clears throat> Laura. Hi, Laura. 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 <laughs> I'm Kath, um, Ron's mom, but as soon as he started speaking, I just felt the pureness in you. There's such a pureness and a oneness with Jesus. And I just feel like um, your voice is going to be heard for to all the younger generation. Like, like how you had said that they're searching for something that only he can fulfill. And that is so true. So I just feel like your voice, let it speak forth, like social media to those around you, just spread, just spread it. It's gonna be like wildfire. Like you'll tell one person and that person will tell another person. And it's just beautiful. Your heart is pure. Your love for him is pure. And that first love that you have for him is never gonna fade out. It's never gonna die. So bless you, love you. Come on, that was so good. Thank you so much. I know I blessed uh, everybody, but uh, oh, we just want to hear more from you. But we have to go to the next person. So uh, my wife said that... Uh, Jose has an extension on his uh, date. So do you want to go? Oh, do you want to go? I know you're going to go today. So do you want to go, Josh? Josh doesn't want to go. Yeah. There's nothing more, they said. Wow. That's all. Do you want to go? I'm you Enjoying it? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. But yeah, it's such an amazing uh, time. Like uh, Catherine said, we're going to do another class in February uh, 28th. It's going to be the Holy Spirit, a bunch of different topics about the Holy Spirit, how to hear God's voice. What does it mean? Uh, prophecy. We're going to do prophecy dreams and interpretations. We're going to do a bunch of different things. We're going to break it down. We're going to show you and explain to you again all fundamental stuff, but in the Bible. But it will go deeper uh, than where we're at right now. But it's always going to point to Jesus. I told you we're not going to talk about methods. We're going to show you the man, the glorified man, the man who's on the throne, who's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the one whose uh, robe is dipped in blood, whose glory uh, fills the whole world and covers it. And the knowledge of his glory, of his person, will be known. But I want to uh, close it, and I'm going to give you guys a quick message that I feel is like a, a now a message. It's going to take maybe like five minutes. And uh, here we go. You guys are going to love it. I'm going to talk to you guys today uh, from Galatians chapter 6. This is a message uh, for today's uh, time, and it goes along with what everybody was saying. So I'm going to summarize it real quickly. Uh, Galatians chapter 6. And I believe it's uh, verse uh, 7. I believe it's verse 7. And it's talking about, wait, I'll get it. Because I want to, I want to make sure 
that doing it right. Because this is going to be a message that we're all going to have to be able to know, that we're all going to have to understand. It's a message that I always say, I'm not just going to teach this message for uh, one generation, because a generation is whoever's alive at that time. I'm not going to teach it for the young. I'm not going to teach it just for the old. It's for every single person so that they can understand, so that they can tell your friends. And this is going to go, or your family members. This is going to go along with, and it's going to help you answer the question that I've heard so many times, and I feel it's going to come up, especially in this day and age, is what the Lord has showed me. And this question is, how can you say that God is good? Uh, why does God allow these things to happen? Uh, why is there evil? All of these questions that I'm sure we've all heard. But we're going to get into it right now. Um, and here we go. It's verse 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. Let the one who is taught the word share all good things with the one who teaches. And verse 7, this is important, get this verse. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hand. It is to those who want to make a good showing in the flesh, who would force you to be circumcised, and would only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. I'm going to read that again. It is to those who want to make a good showing in the flesh, who would force you to be circumcised, and only in order that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For even those who are circumcised do not themselves keep the law, but they desire to have you circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. But, it's, but far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble. And he goes off. For I bear on my body the marks of Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the message for today's day and age. This is the message to answer anybody who says, why did all of these things happen? God is not mocked. God is not mocked. We reap, right? This is what Jesus tells the people. Jesus tells the people what? Do not be afraid of those who can kill the flesh, for it is only momentary. Be afraid of the one who, who, can, who can destroy you, who can take away your life once and for all. What is he saying? Do not have the fear of man, the appeasing of man. Be afraid of God. Have the fear of God in understanding what? That God is not mocked. It may not look like the, the judgment is on them yet, but trust me, the judgment for what they have done and what they are doing is already upon them because there is no satisfaction. Like Laura was saying, there might be a satisfaction in the moment. There might be a momentary, oh, I feel good. You might have money. You might have all of this. But if you do not have God, you can never be in eternal delight. You can never be in eternal satisfaction. You can never be assured of where you're going to go when you die. You can never be assured that you have peace. You can never be assured that you have joy. You can never be assured of the things that God wants for you. God is not mocked. It may not look like the judgment is upon them, but that which you have in you already is greater than that which they have now and will have later. God is not mocked. He sees everything. It goes furthermore and it talks about those of the circumcision just wants you to appease the flesh so that they can say that, look, you do the same things that way we do, even though they know that they won't follow the law. It says they're circumcised, but they don't follow the law. What does that mean? It means absolutely nothing. It's useless to them. But this is what the world is trying to do in this day and age. It's trying to add things on to what the spirit has already told you to do. It's trying to make you produce God in and of yourself. 
It's playing the same thing that they did with Aaron. Throw, the, throw it into the fire. Make us a God to worship. We're called to worship God and God alone. We're not meant to add our own means. That which you began in the spirit, do you not think you can perfect in the flesh? In this day and age, God is not going to be mocked. Don't play games. If you're not assured of what is supposed to be assured to you, why would you continue to play with it? This is what I tell people all of the times. If you're not sure, how can you be assured? Because I'm not looking towards a destination later on that I might make it to the destination. I'm already there. I'm already seated in heavenly places. What does that mean? I have peace. I have joy. I have self-control. I have everything that the Holy Spirit has promised to every single person. In this day and age, are you assured of what you have? God is not mocked. It may look like, and they might say, oh, but how does God let people get away with it? Trust me, my friends, he's not going to let them get away with it if they do not change their ways, if they do not repent. The judgment of God is the justice of God because he allows people to repent. If you do not repent, what do you expect? God's love has made a way. He sent his one and only son to show you how precious you are to him, to give you a way free for freedom. But if he paid such a high price, you better believe he wants his reward. And it has nothing to do with you anyways. It's not like you have to work something up. It's not like you have to continually push forward. This is the beauty of Christianity. You don't have to force yourself to produce something. You already have become something, so it flows out. It's easy. It's as easy as breathing. It's as easy as knowing that you are his very own, that you are one with him. You can't lie to yourself and say that, oh, I'm led by God, yet you don't know his voice. How can you say, I have a relationship with God, yet you've never heard him? How can you say you have a relationship with somebody, yet you've never, ever talked to them? This is what we're going to go into in the next teaching. We're going to talk about what prayer actually is. Because a lot of people are doing exactly what the Bible says. Don't be like the Gentiles who just continuously pray mantras, who continuously pray phrases over and over. You're like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not like the, the Catholics who say, are uh, Mary, and they go in our Mary over and over and over again. But my friends, if you're not praying in the spirit, it all amounts to nothing. That's exactly what this chapter is saying right here. Whatever you don't do in the spirit, will not reap you anything. But if you sow in the flesh, you better expect that you're going to reap in the flesh unless you repent, unless you change your mind, unless you stop doing what you are doing. This is why it's an easy message for any uh, age group to understand. Well, my friends say, my friends don't believe in God, yet they have this nice car. My friends don't believe in God, yet they have all of this. But are they satisfied? Oh, it might look like they're satisfied, but when they go home, are they satisfied? When they're alone by themselves, are they free? Are they joyful? Are they always in a place of freedom? My friends, if you don't have God, just like Laura said, you can't have the fullness of what, the, what God wants for you. You're dead to the world. Galatians 6. But that doesn't mean that, that, that somehow, like, oh, now I'm less than, I'm, you are called to be more than a conqueror. You're called to be an overcomer. That doesn't mean that, oh, I just live in lack and that's what God wants for me. God doesn't want you to live in lack. God, God doesn't want you to live in a pain, in sorrow, in this earth. And then when you get to heaven, then he'll trade it for joy. Then he'll trade it for life. Then he'll trade it away. This is what we've taught so many kids, what we taught so many people. God does some kind of a magical exchange when you get to heaven. My friends, he does that when you give your life to him. That's why it's called you die to the world, and now you receive his life. That exchange which you've been waiting for on a later date, this is what Catherine talked to you guys about. It says what? Uh, hope deferred makes the heart grow weary. Hope deferred makes the heart grow weary. That word hope, and I told you guys this before, means expectation. If my expectation is on a later date, then I've set it away. And of course, my heart will grow weary because I don't know. Will it happen? What if I do this this day? What if I do that that day? What about this? What about that? What about this? And the conscience convicts you. But my friends, the good news today and the good news that you can tell all your friends and all of your family is that you don't have to live that life. You don't have to act like you're satisfied. You don't have to act like you're in delight. You can actually be in it. He actually fulfills 
everything that you need. And anybody who thinks that they can lie to God, anybody who's in the church and not living the life that God has told them to live, this is true. And anybody who thinks that they can mock God, whether they do, whether they do it willingly or, un, or, or, or without the knowledge of God yet, my friends, God will bring justice and pure judgment because that is a form of his love as well. To judge the flesh so you can live in the spirit. To judge it once and for all. That's what the cross does. He judges sin once and for all, and he makes you and judges you righteous once and for all. But it's important to understand. Galatians chapter 6. Do not, do not believe that God will be mocked. You can put on your mask. You can put on all of these different things that you think will show God that, oh, maybe I'm different than this and I'm different than that. But my friends, he knows your heart. He knows what's actually in there. You can't lie to him. This is what Sister Kira was talking about. If you just say it with your lips and you don't believe it in your heart, what does it benefit you? I have, I have joy, but really you don't? Come on now. It's not the life that you have to live. I have peace, but really you don't. The truth is this. This is what the world is going to try and do. This is what it has been doing. Trying to add things onto Christianity to make it seem like the world. It wants, and Christianity has allowed it, to conform itself to the world when the world is supposed to be transformed, supposed to be covered with the glory of God, supposed to have the understanding and knowledge of God. This is why so many young generation, so many of my own generation, he's like, I don't want God. God, God, there's so many hypocrites in the church. What does God do for me? I can do that at the end of my life. My friends, do not believe that. God will not be mocked. The truth is, you need God. You need God because you can't live the life that you even want to live without God. You can't be truly successful. Go ahead and make a million dollars. And what is your next goal after that? To make a million more. Then when you make that million, guess what you're going to want? Now I can try and get 10 million. And then after you get 10 million, you make 100 million. And then what happens after that? Oh, but it's for my family. It's for a legacy for my children. Now what happens with your children? Now they go 100 million. And now they want a billion. Now they go from a billion and they keep going in this cycle of trying to make themselves feel fulfilled. And it doesn't work, my friends. Only God fulfills you. This is the truth. You could tell any single person that what, oh, what do you want? You want peace. You want joy. God will give it to you. God is not mocked. It may not look like he's judging a person in the moment, but his judgment has already been given on the cross, my friends. You can guarantee, you can take it to the bank that if you do not repent, if you do not change your mind, if you do not believe that Jesus can set you free from sin and live the life that God wants for you, my friends, God is not mocked. We are called to be not like the world. We are called to show them what the world is supposed to be like. Jesus coming to the world shows the world what the world is supposed to be like because he says he is the son of man. He shows us what it means to be a human. He shows us what the world is supposed to look like. That's why he says the Lord's prayer. Let heaven come to earth, not earth come to heaven. That of the earth is not going to heaven. Do not think God will be mocked. It's simple. It really is simple. You understand, like, I can just keep going. You can just keep trying to do things to try and make joy happen. Maybe I'll go and, oh, you know what makes me happy? I'll go fishing. How long can you go fishing? You can only go fishing for so many hours a day. And then what do you have to do the next day? I have to go fishing again. Then the next day, oh, I didn't go fishing. So now what? Oh, I wish I went fishing. I wish I did this. I wish I did that. There's a lack in your life that only God can fulfill because he's omnipresent. He's always there. He's all powerful. He can meet your need in every single moment. That doesn't necessarily mean that your need, that the need that you have looks like the want that you have. And that's the message. Hey, where's Andres? I'm about to go meet him. Okay. He's about, <laughs> about to get baptized tomorrow. Andres. That's what Ariel told us. Okay, okay. He's about to get baptized. Do you want anything out of this time? 
is the girl Ooh. that we have. And, uh, Do you get commission? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say absolutely. <laughs> That's the real. Getting ready to baptize somebody. That's what she's been doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. There we go. And that's the message that you can tell every single person that God is the only way. That's what the world has tried to change. That God is not the only way. God is not the only truth. God is not the only means for life. My friends, that is the biggest lie you can believe. You can throw that in a trash can, burn the trash can, incinerate the trash can, send it off to the moon because it ain't ever going to be true. That's just the truth. That's the simple truth. God will not be mocked. And it's a beauty to every Christian to know that, that that which is done towards you or against you, God is the judge. That's what it says. God will bring vindication. God will do all this. That's why he says you don't have to worry about it because God is on your side. You don't have to even, this is why people, oh, I, I was offended. I have unforgiveness. I have all of these things. Why? Because you don't believe God will act on your behalf or you have a time limit upon which you want him to act. My friends, get that out of your mind. We're eternal. We live forever. God will judge. God will take care. God will show you what needs to be done. God will do what God wants to do in his timing. So that's the message for today. Thank you, everybody, uh, for sharing what you guys shared. It was amazing. It was super good. Uh, we're so proud of you. We'll continue to send out uh, emails about this next upcoming school. Of course, we're still going to have... Uh, church on sunday we'll have it all live streamed on the facebook so anybody all oh, in live in person anybody wants to come anybody wants to watch it you're more than welcome to i'm sure we're going to ask some people to uh, speak as well hopefully all of you so we'll try and get all of that set up and we'll try and set it up so that you can uh sign up early you guys can share it with your friends but i'm so proud of you i know Catherine is so proud of you it didn't uh it uh, blesses us to know it didn't just become a, something that you just repeated. If you look at it, nobody said exactly what we said. They said, this is what you said, and this is what it means to me, and this is what God is telling me. And that's the major blessing, to know that you've taken what we said, taken it back to God, you've applied it to your life, and God has showed you what it means. So hallelujah, I bless you guys. Uh, let the glory of God invade all of your households. Let the glory of God touch all of your families. Let the glory of God touch you. Remember what I always say. Uh, don't look back on your past experience because God is ready to be experienced anew in every single moment and in every single day and greater than it was before. So I thank you, God, for what you're doing. Uh, in Jesus' name, bless every single person. I know Catherine's going to reach out to all of you. I'll reach out to all of you. Uh, it's just so amazing. So blessed. Bless you guys. Hallelujah.